Hey guys, it's Record Dane. I've got a 1996 Ford Mustang GT here, and I'm going to show you how to change the radiator. Now the body style for the 1994 to 1998 is the same, but in 94 and 95 there was a different engine. 96, 97, and 98 have a 4.6 liter engine. So this radiator replacement may be similar to 94 and 95, but it's not exactly the same. If you need to know how to change your water pump and your thermostat, check out my channel for that video. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is jack up the car. That way we can get some jack stands under the car and remove the jack and give us some more room to work. Next thing we're gonna do is take our battery out. So you just want to remove the negative and then the positive cables and then remove the black plastic cover if you happen to have one. Now most Mustangs you won't be able to pull out the battery because it has this little block in there to secure the battery. So we're going to take our socket wrench and remove that and then we can pull the battery out. And to give us some extra room we're going to remove the battery tray. And as soon as we get the battery tray out then we can go and drain the radiator and on the passenger side you can go up underneath and there'll be a little drain plug right there that we're going to pull out and that's how you can drain the radiator. So what you want to do is remove your radiator cap first but if you happen to have a radiator like mine that's full of sediment you're going to have to drain it from this bottom hose. So while we let that coolant drain out we're going to remove the top hose and all you're going to need is a pliers and you're just going to remove the hose clamp, pull that down and then you may need a flathead screwdriver to be able to wedge under the hose and uh, just to be able to wiggle it back and forth until it finally pops off. Then we'll go and remove the other side, the part of the hose that attaches to the radiator. And this should be pretty easy to pull out. And as soon as we get that pulled out, the next thing we're going to do is take out the reservoir tank. There's two nuts at the very top and then one right behind it. And you just take those off and then we'll take off the hose from the reservoir tank that attaches to the radiator. And then you're going to remove the reservoir tank sensor and that's pretty easy to remove. And then we'll remove the reservoir tank hose. So you want to pull that hose clamp down and then just slide that reservoir tank hose off. And that's it for the reservoir tank. Everything should be loose. You just want to slide it out and pull it up and out. The next thing to do is to remove the bottom hose from the engine side. And here's a top view, it's kind of hard to get to, so it's a little bit easier to get to from underneath, but just pull that hose clamp off and remove the hose. Then we need to remove the black plastic trim that's on top. You can use a drill, or if that doesn't work for you, you can just use a regular screwdriver. You may need a Phillips head to pop those out. And then we'll just pull that off. And now we'll be able to get to the radiator brackets. We'll just take our socket wrench, and pull these radiator brackets out and we'll be able to use these brackets for the new radiator. They have a rubber bushing in there so make sure that they are still good and not cracked and worn. The driver's side radiator bracket is a little bit different. It's got the bolts underneath and then you're just going to remove that the same way. Use a socket wrench and pull those out. It has that same rubber bushing that you want to inspect to make sure it's not cracked. And as soon as you get that out, just to give us a little bit more room, we're going to take off the ground wire. There's a little wire right here, and we'll just remove that to get that out of the way. And put your bolt back. And then you can pull out this radiator bracket and check it over, make sure it's good. The next thing to do is to remove all these wires that are attached to the radiator and kind of wrap around the fan and attached to the fan. You just want to get them out of the way so you'll be able to pull the radiator out and straight up. So you just want to remove those and get those out of the way. Just make sure that you disconnect the radiator fan and then also it has a bunch of these little um, plugs that attach to the all the plastic and everything to keep all the wires tight. So you want to remove those. The next thing to do is to remove your transmission cooler lines. There's one on the top and on the bottom. And all you're going to do is take an open end wrench and just uh, loosen those up. And as soon as you get those loosened up, this is what it looks like. It's got a little sleeve on the end that attaches into the radiator but it's got this loose sleeve on the transmission line so that's what it looks like. 
So after you remove these, everything should be disconnected and you should be able to pull it straight up and just make sure the cooler lines are out of the way and any of the electrical wires are out of the way as you pull the radiator straight up. And as soon as you get it out, then we'll just take it and set it down on the ground next to the new radiator. And what we're going to do is just transfer the fan right over to the new radiator. And we'll need to install a few clips and also a couple of the um, transmission cooler line bolts. So we'll just uh, take out the three bolts that are on the uh, fan itself and just transfer it right over to the new one. And then we will attach a couple of the clips that go on the bottom side of the radiator. And the new radiator will come with all the hardware that you'll need for installation. Okay, so what you're going to want to do now is take your new hoses and put them next to your old ones and then we'll just transfer over the hose clamps to the new ones. And it is possible that you're going to have to trim the length on this tri-hose. This is the bottom hose that attaches from the engine to the reservoir tank and to the radiator. So you just have to measure that up, but just transfer over the hose clamps and we're ready to go. Okay, so let's put this new radiator in. Just make sure the wires are out of the way. The transmission lines are out of the way as well. You don't want to mess those up. Just make sure that everything's going in how it should go in. You put the bottom of the radiator into the rubber bushings at the very bottom. And make sure everything's lined up. You just gotta, gotta wiggle it until it finally goes in. And then just check to make sure that nothing is being pinched or squeezed. And then you can uh, test the transmission cooler line to see if that fits, if it's at a good height. And then uh, the next thing to do is just to take your uh, radiator bracket with the bushing and put the bolts in. On the driver's side, then we'll take that uh, negative ground cable and attach that back. And then take the passenger side bracket and we'll attach that back and put the bolt in and then just tighten it up with your socket wrench. And then we'll take the electrical system and we'll plug that back in, plug your fan in, and then all the other wires, they're pretty easy to plug back in. You won't get them mixed up at all. But just plug those back in. And then it's time to attach the transmission cooler lines, both the top and the bottom. You wanna get them started and make sure you don't strip these out and get those started and tighten those back up. And this is the bottom hose, so that part goes to the reservoir tank, this part goes to the radiator, and this part goes to the engine. So we're going to install that, and then your top hose is pretty easy to install. So as long as everything is out, I like to clean it. As long as I got it out, it'll be a little easier to clean. But we're going to put the reservoir tank back in. There's two nuts that go on the front part, and then one that goes back behind it. And I've got a brand new reservoir tank cap that I'll put on. And then the next thing to do is take the hose that goes from the reservoir tank and take that hose clamp and attach that back. And you want to plug in the reservoir tank sensor and attach the reservoir tank hose. Now all you have to do is take the cap off and we're going to put some coolant into the reservoir tank which then goes into the radiator itself. And you're just going to keep adding coolant and it's going to burp and air is going to come out but just keep adding it up to the fill line. Now also we need to put in the battery tray and also your battery which I won't show you how to do that, you know how to do that. And then you're just going to get in the car and start it up. As soon as we get it started up we're going to turn the blower on high, we're going to turn it on to vent and then we'll take our temperature and we'll turn it all the way on heat and we'll just let it run for about 20 minutes. And when it's running we can uh, add a little bit more coolant and you can watch the level of the antifreeze go down and just keep adding some more to it. As you can see here, it's already dropped a little bit more, so we're gonna add more to it. After you start it up, just keep adding coolant because it's gonna keep lowering. You're just gonna let the engine run for about 20 minutes, then come back to it, 
add some more coolant until your whole system is full. I hope changing this radiator helped you out with your 1996 Ford Mustang GT 4.6 liter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.